Welcome. Welcome to Father's Day. Have you given your dad or your granddad or husband, perhaps, a cup of tea? Or is it bacon and eggs? Or is it, well, we're preparing for lunchtime? Or perhaps some of you have had difficulty and it's not easy to remember. But we say thank you to all of you, all of you gentlemen that are father figures in our community. And so we're going to sing and can it be? Because he left his father's throne above, so free, so infinite his grace, emptied himself of all but love and bled for Adam's helpless race. Tis mercy all, immense and free. For oh my God, it fattened out me. A Charles Wesley song that we can open this worship together. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us this week. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity of meeting together like this. And we thank you for all the father figures, but we thank you, God, for being our father. Help us to have a good day. Help us to celebrate. Help us to enjoy one another's company and help us where there is difficulty. I pray that there will be healing and comfort and that all will be well. Help us now, Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 12, where it says, and this is basically thinking about a wedding. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Let's say the family prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
prayed to our Father God. And now we're going to sing, I stand amazed in the presence. Now this is an oldie, which I hope all churches, all Salvation Army will remember. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned, unclean. How marvellous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvellous, how wonderful is my Saviour's love for me. And that's written by Charles H. Gabriel. And it, the fourth verse says, He took my sins and my sorrows. He made them his very own. He bore the burden of Calvary and suffered and died alone. He, God our Father, sent his Son to take our sins away. For Jesus is majesty and we're going to sing King of Kings God of heaven living in me gentle saviour closest friend strong deliverer beginning and end all within me falls at your throne your majesty and father God and that's written by Gerard Cooper, which I hope you'll be able to join in and sing. Oh, dear, 
Our New Testament reading is taken from Colossians chapter 3 this time. We've looked at Colossians before, but Colossians chapter 3 and verses 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievance you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgives you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And then we look at Philippians, another Pauline writing from the Apostle Paul. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of a selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And as we remember on this Father's Day that we have to say thank you, we must say thank you to those who are father figures. We must say thank you to God for being with us all the time. So, those Bible readings have shown that we must be clothed with compassion. Compassion was mentioned in both. Do nothing out of selfish ambition, says Philippians. Quite challenging words. But on this Father's Day, 
let us really remember what it's all about. And if you have your father, then give him a hug. If you don't, then just come and say, thank you, God, for that father figure, for my dad. I've got to be honest, I miss my father a lot. But when I look at my son, like you must do sometimes in your families, you've got the double. And sometimes you can look in the eyes. I can and see my dad there. So we're going to sing, There is a Redeemer. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, O oh my Father, God the Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. So we come together. The song written by Charles Wesley, Tis Finished. The Messiah dies, cut off for sins, but not his own. Accomplished is the sacrifice, the great redeeming work is done. Tis finished, all the debt is paid. Justice divine is satisfied. The grand and full atonement made, God for a guilty world has died. May we know the power of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, and may we know the love of our Father God. Amen.